quick. All right. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. It is a pleasure to be here. Uh, I love Arizona. <laughs> uh, I've come here all my life, literally 24 years, uh, in case you're wondering. Uh, I've been here my entire life every single year for 24 years. I've come to Arizona, and today it's something special. Uh, it's the first time that I'm invited uh, to speak out here, so it's a blessing, okay? It's a blessing. Um, why don't we start out with the word of prayer? Father God in heaven, we come to you this morning, Father God, because we want to experience you, Father. We have walked through different paths in life, but God, we are so gracious because you have walked with us, and you have met us in the place where we stand and walk. So, Father God, I pray that today's message, Lord, it is your message. Open the hearts of everybody. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, we've been talking about uh, faith, hope, love, right? So, I actually, there's, there's, a diff there's another term I would actually put in there, uh, and I would put trust. How many of you trust God? Yes? All right, so I wrote this. I'm walking through this avenue. I'm jumping through this obstacle. You know all my follicles call me the prodigal. I'm home to my master, finishing this chapter. Your kingdom and your righteousness is what I'm after. I'm shaped by a character. Nothing is impossible. Healing through the broken pieces, claiming to the name of Jesus. Trial after trial, I'm walking through the fire, but call it momentary, call it momentary, call it momentary. I'm losing to this game, so take over. The clock winding down, it's the fourth quarter. Demons taking me to the dark, dark corner, but I'm walking in the light, moving on forward. The way, the truth, and the life, everlasting words walk me through the strife. I'm leaning on the rock, I'm leaning on the rock, I'm leaning on the rock. Just trust the Lord, okay? Just trust the Lord. That's it. Trust the Lord. Okay, so uh, I'm going to begin with a quick uh, story. <laughs> okay, so when I was a kid, I was four years old, I was sitting in the chapel, La like Capilla, where I grew up, okay? So I was sitting in the chapel, and uh, I believe my parents were somewhere else, and the person that was taking care of me was my tia, my aunt, okay, my tia Concha. Now, I love this woman. She raised me. Uh, she installed the fear of God into my soul. Uh, so praise the Lord for that. But on this specific Sabbath, there was a meeting going on, okay? So it was like a meeting going on. The pastor is just like, you know, going over this meeting. And I'm sitting down quietly, and I got like my little toys playing and whatnot. And then I see somebody walking in. It was a cute girl. Oh, yeah. All right. So I'm walking in. I'm, I'm like sitting there, and uh, this girl walks in, okay? As she walks in, she actually sits in my row. So, you know, I'm chilling, and I'm actually playing with my toys. So she walks, and she sits right next to me, and I'm like, all right, Randy, I know you're four years old, but you got this, right? So I'm playing with my toys, right? And she's like, oh, you're so cute, and I was like, oh, yeah, you know, I get that a lot as a kid, right? So then she comes, and she's, like, just sitting right next to me. And now we just have this, like, full-on conversation going on. Now, at the corner of my eye, my aunt is sitting, like, two rows behind me. And she's like, oh, you're speaking too loud, huh? So she gave me that look. And I turned around, and she gave me that look, like, right? So I just kind of sat there and then she was like you have a spider-man toy i was like yes i have a spider-man toy and then the pastor was like whoa what's going on over here and now my aunt she got up oh okay you guys will definitely you guys know what this is going to happen so my aunt went to my room she's like hey shh. i'm gonna pull your ear right and i was like okay okay and as she walked you know back to her seat 
Here I am. I spoke out loud again. And before she sat down, she came back and she grabbed me. And we went into the church lobby, okay? So we went into the lobby and she said, didn't I tell you you're not allowed to speak? And I said, yes. So then my aunt, she's like, vas a ver, you're going to see. And I was like, okay, all right, all right. Chill, you know, like, relax, Dia. We're good. We're, it's all good. She's like, no, you just don't understand, huh? So when we get home, I'm going to give you the chancla, okay, the sandal. Okay, here we go, all right. So she asked me. I remember this. Man, I was four years old, but I, I'm really good with memory, okay? So she asked me, do you want the chancla, the sandal, or do you want the cincho, the belt? <laughs> Which one do you want? And I was like, I, you know, halfway through tears and whatnot, I told her, I said, none. I stood up to my aunt, this little boy, none, no quiero, I don't want any. She's like, all right, you trying to be smart with me, boy. And I was like, okay, all right. But here's the thing. Here's, here's how that, like, conversation led. See, my aunt was like, see, you can't speak in the house of the Lord like that. Because God is going to be mad at you. I love, look, now, I love my dear to death, let me tell you. But that certain theology started shaping my mind. So when I started growing older and I was in Sabbath school and I spoke out of turn too because I was that one kid who speaks out of turn. Yeah, I know some Sabbath school teachers are here like, oh, those type of kids, right? But I was that type of kid who just spoke out of turn. And so when the teacher looked at me and said, don't do that, the Lord. And I was like, oh. so there was like this fear that was installed into my heart. Now, my tia, again, I love my tia to death. But let me tell you, when she installed the fear of God, it was that type of fear, okay? So this is why I call it chancla theology, okay? Hashtag chancla theology, or if you want to call it cincho theology, because it's this mindset that God is actually mad at you. Whoo! He's upset with you. He's disappointed with you. Now, what's worse? I'm going to ask you guys, what's worse, being mad at somebody and angry or being disappointed in somebody? Disappointed. All right, now my dad's here, okay? I remember I got my, <laughs> my first, like, I was almost failing English, okay? I know, out of all the classes, I was almost failing English, okay? My report card came in, and my dad looked at it. He opened it. And I thought, oh, man, this is game over, right? Like, my dad's going to get mad. He's going to do the scene show too, right? But he's like, you got to do better. You got to step up your game. You better do better. And I just felt the disappointment in my dad. I was just like, man. But then I switched it back, and every time I went into these dark alleys of my life, I felt the same way. I felt the same way. Like, God was looking at me and said, dude, Randy, not good disappointments and there's many times where we think that God is holding that chancla ready to just throw it at you or just hit you really hard so that you can learn or that cincho he'll take it out his whip like the one he did in uh when it, when Jesus was at the you know the courts at the market right when Jesus was like whipping everything right Jesus displayed his anger that's the type of theology that I was growing up to think that God was viewing me that way and when i went down the hardest time of my life at puc i felt like god was just about to hit me with the sandal la chancla and i felt this bitter disappointment in my life is that the way god views me right come with me to luke 7 okay this is a beautiful story Luke 7, we're starting in verse 36, and when you get there, please give me an amen, because I love Luke chapter 7, verse 36, okay? Luke chapter 7, verse 36, okay? Here we go. Y'all there? All right. Luke chapter 7, verse 36, and I'm reading from the NLT version, and it says, one of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him, so Jesus went 
to his home and sat down to eat. Let's pause there. I'm Salvadorian. I love pupusas sometimes, okay? I have this, like, love and hate pupusa, like, relationship with pupusas, but Jesus was invited to this house. Now, the reason why Jesus was invited to this house is because there's this dude named Simon the Leopard. He's a Pharisee. Now, here's the beautiful thing about the gospel, okay? Whenever a story repeats in every gospel, that's, there's a huge significance in that, right? Because let me tell you, not even the birth of Jesus is represented in every gospel, right? You don't really see that in Mark. When you read the book of Mark and you read the first chapter, like, it's already cutting into Jesus' life and his ministry, right? But this story appears in every gospel, and there's a huge reason why. So we were looking at this story, Simon the leopard who had leprosy, in those days, you were an outsider, outcasted. Nobody wanted to be around you. Ooh, those lepers? Nah, man, I ain't getting near that. I'm going to get it myself. They were considered the sinners, right? They had something, like, they, it's almost the essence of, see, the Jewish, the Jewish mindset was they had it wrong with God. And they got it hit so many times to that chancla, right? That God just gave them this leprosy. And because they're not on the right, like, relationship with God, they, that's why they have leprosy, right? And it was this mindset that God was angry with them as well. And so Jesus, at whatever time happened, sees Simon the leopard, boom, heals him. And the best way to respond in that was Simon the leper told Jesus, just come over, we're going to have some pupusas. All right, just come over, right? So this is what happens. We're in verse 37. It says, when a certain immoral woman from that city heard he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. And verse 38 says, then she knelt behind him at his feet weeping. Her tears fell on his feet and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. Okay, so Jesus is literally like talking with his boys and they're having a, such a great time. This woman hears about Jesus, right? Oh, come on. She hears about Jesus, okay? She hears that Jesus is here. And so she goes, she goes in through the front door, doesn't even care about anything, and she sees Jesus sitting down, and she starts kneeling and just starts pouring out everything, okay? We see that she bought the most expensive what? Perfume. Now, some of you guys gone to Dillard's, Right? Oh, yeah, there you go. All right, so you guys walk through, like, that perfume section, and, like, it's being sprayed all over, and you're like, dude, that's, you know, Coco Chanel and uh, Kenneth Cole mixed together. And you know what I'm saying, right? This, like, perfume. Now, here's the stuff, okay? <laughs> this perfume bottle was the type of stuff that you don't find at Dillard's or a Macy's or a J.C. Penney. This is a type of stuff you find in the underground markets. Okay? Now, this woman was an immoral woman. In fact, different versions say that she was a sinful woman. Ooh, that's a bad connotation, right? Sinful woman of the town. So this sinful woman of the town comes through the house, and she bought this little bottle of perfume. Now, how much do you think this bottle of perfume cost? Just guess. <laughs> 150 Nah. Remember, she did some stuff in the, in the city, you feel me? This woman was a prostitute. So she bought everything with that money. Alabaster. You know how much that was? Today's, today's money, it would be like 10 grand. Little bottle of perfume. And so she walks into Jesus' Jesus's area. She begins to wipe down and just cry and cry you know back in the day a woman couldn't put her hair down and here she is she puts her hair down starts wiping jesus's feet right and so this is what happens okay Ooh, here we go here we go 
This is such a scene right here. Verse 39 says, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, Okay, so he thought this. He said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know that what kind of woman is touching him. She is a sinner. Now, homeboy did not just say that out loud, right? He thought that in his mind. And he saw, he saw what was going on. And so Jesus, right? Ooh, I love Jesus. Jesus looks at him. He says, Simon, I have something to tell you. Woo! Could you imagine if you had a thought in your mind and you didn't even verbalize it? You just saw that person like, hmm, hmm, yeah, hmm. And then Jesus straight up call you, like calls you out and says, hey, I know what you're thinking, and it's not nice. That would be pretty bad, Right? Like, you know, when somebody, see, here in L.A., dude, I mean, I'm not here in L.A., but in L.A., okay, people cut you off on the freeway every single time, okay, and they just don't care, and they're speeding through, and they cut you off, and you know how many times I just looked at him, and I thought that in my mind, but if Jesus was sitting right next to me, he'd be like, yo, don't be thinking about that, right? Don't you be thinking about that. That's not good, right? I have something to tell you. This is exactly what's going on. And let me tell y'all, Simon was just healed like a few weeks ago. And he's calling her a sinner? Dude, what's up with that? Like, he was just considered one of the outcasts of society. And let me tell you, that's exactly what happens sometimes. Because... When Jesus turns our life around, and praise God, because we have those moments, Jesus literally 180 degrees, not 360, okay? <laughs> I love you, I love you, I love you, okay? 180 degrees, okay? Because if it was 360, we'd be, we'd be going back to the same thing, you know, right? <laughs> but it was 180 degrees, right, that Jesus turns our life around, and we look at this, and we're like, dude, I am healed by the grace of God, and I'm a different person. But you see that person over there? She's a sinner, He's a sinner, messed up person. And so we quickly forget where God has transformed us. And so we belittle other people by even our thoughts. Woo, I'm speaking to a crowd, right? It happens. It happens to me. And let me tell you, one time I was at church at Central Spanish. Now, I love that church. It's my home church, but boy, it is conservative, okay? And I have this conservative mindset as well, okay? So I was sitting down, and now at church, it is huge, by the way. It is re it's, it's really big, okay? So I'm sitting in the, it was kind of like the balcony area, and I'm sitting down with my friends. We're like just having this conversation, super rude, preachers preaching, and I'm just in a different mindset. And I see homeboy walk in, baggy pants, baggy shirt, just like walking in, like making a scene through church, and I'm like, dude, he's wearing jeans. Why is he in the house of the Lord? He cannot be wearing jeans. How is that possible? And I looked at him, and I, was, I just like stared him down. I was like, mm, in the house of the Lord, right? And he sat down. This dude was in love with the sermon. But my mindset was somewhere else. I didn't care about what type of relationship he was having with God. All I cared about what is what he was wearing, where he was coming from. And I had forgotten that God had saved my life. Whoo! I had forgotten that super quickly. And that's exactly what's happening with Simon. Simon completely forgets and calls this woman a sinner. And so we have this moment where Jesus is like this. Let me tell you, Jesus says, all right, Simon, I got something to tell you. He says, go ahead, teacher. And Simon's all cool trying to play it off. He's like, dude, okay. So a man loaned money to two people, 500 pieces of silver and to one 50 pieces to the other. But neither of them could repay him. So he kindly forgave both of them, right, canceling their debts. Who do you suppose loved him more after that? And in verse 43, it says, Simon answered, I suppose the one whom he canceled the larger debt. Now, you have to understand that Jesus is actually trying to reach into Simon's heart by saying, hey, dude, 
you know, last week you were in debt 500. She's over here in debt 50. It doesn't matter. Y'all couldn't pay the, the debt. I canceled both of them. So how dare you come into this house and call this woman a, sin, a sinner? You understand this? Now, here's, here's, here's why I love Jesus, okay? This whole time, Simon the leper is looking at this woman, and this woman is weeping at Jesus' feet. But praise God that Jesus is in the house. Because let me tell you, if it was, if it was a woman, like, doing that to another man, it would be a completely different story. Right? This dude would have been, like, he would have been like, get out of my house. But Jesus is right there. And now, let me talk about the woman, because I have not talked about her. This woman did not come to Jesus because she's like, dude, Jesus, look, I'm going to give you everything that I have so that I can experience true forgiveness in my life. Jesus, I'm going to come to you because I've been a sinful person and I know that you have the chancla ready to strike me down. But here I am, like, I'm going to, look, Jesus, I'm going to give you everything that I have so that you don't strike me down. You know why this woman came? Because she loved Jesus. Oh, now you're seeing it. This woman actually came because she knew that Jesus had already transformed her life. This woman came with $10,000 of a perfume bottle, came to Jesus and said, Jesus, thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for giving me a new life. Here I am. And she starts crying and saying, thank you, Jesus. You have saved my life. This is a worship scene, y'all. This is a worship scene. This woman is literally worshiping Jesus because she acknowledges that Jesus came to save. And she, here she is, just pouring out her heart, everything. And this is what Jesus said. This is what Jesus said. He said, that's right, Jesus said. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, look at the woman, okay? He says, look at the woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust from my feet, but she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. Let me just pause there real quick. You know, it was a custom for a guest to come in you know those water jars, right, that they had back in those days? So they had water jars for the guests that come in because the damn dusty feet were all over the place, you know. But for the, the person, the host was supposed to just come to the person who was invited to come in and, like, wipe them feet, give them water. But when Jesus entered, all he did was sit at the table. You guys understand this? See, at the beginning, this person, Simon the leper, should have given Jesus some water to wipe his feet. But he didn't care. He thought he was in the right. He thought just, okay, Jesus, just because I invited you, I'm good. I invited you into my house, all right, I'm good. But everything else, I don't need. I don't, I don't need to give you water for your feet. Just sit down, right? But this woman who's not, it's not even her house. She comes in. And she starts doing that for Jesus. That's how powerful this moment is because she loves Jesus. And so at this moment, Simon is like, dude, I thought I was in the right. But Jesus continued to say, look, you didn't greet me with a kiss. But from the time I first came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she has anointed my feet with perf rare perfume. I tell you, her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven, so that she has shown me so much love. But a person who is forgiven little, sh little uh, only loves little. Then Jesus said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are are forgiven and this is this is this is amazing right here real quick it says then the men at the table said among themselves who is this man that he goes around forgiving sins and jesus said to the woman your faith has saved you go in peace look it's gonna make this simple because it's not complicated 
See, a lot of the times we're sitting in the house of the Lord. I'm just going to be real with you guys. Sitting in the house of the Lord, thinking that we're in the right. But the moment a person comes in who's feeling unwelcomed, brokenhearted, we look at them and like, yeah, that's a sinful person. May the grace of God be on them. And we forget that the grace of God should have, it was on us sitting down, right? There's so many times where, look, even at my own church, I've had so many people come in, why is this person in church? And I ask them, why are you in church? Like, what gives you the right to say, why is that person in church? I'm telling you, why are you in church? Oh, it's because I love God. Yes, well, this person loves God but looks different, and it's all good, right? This is the, I'd rather, look, I'd rather be in the house of the Lord with somebody that is this, this needs Christ. I'd rather, I'd rather be in the, in the house of the Lord just being like, you know what, I know this person really messed up, but let me sit next to them and let me love them. It's like Christ would have done the exact same thing. Look, there are people here who have struggled for years. Like thinking that the chancla was going to come after them from God. Let me tell you today, Jesus met this woman and this woman was transformed. And I'm praying that you are transformed when you meet Jesus as well. That's the type of stuff that is transforming. It's like that's literally the gospel. It transforms. It's living hope. It's the good news. So this woman is a lot of us. Let me tell you, I, PUC, mm, boy, did I have my doubts of being a pastor. Boy, did I have times where I was like, God, I'm, I'm, I'm done before I even start. And let me tell you just real quick about the enemy and what he does. See, the enemy will try to take you out before it even starts. You guys understand that? Before your journey starts to walking with Christ, he tries to sever that and says, you have no journey with Christ. But let me tell you, the enemy, nah. He has no dominion over your life. And I speak that confident in the name of Jesus. He has no dominion over your life. So let me tell you, if you are that woman who has messed up through life, if you are that woman who's like, man, I have a bad reputation in my life. People know me around here as that person. And let me tell you, let me, just, let, uh, let me just go back to this verse very quickly. You see how Jesus, look, look in verse 50. Okay, it says, once again, Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. You notice how Jesus didn't say, hey, well, hey, sinner. Hey, sinner, go, go in peace. Your faith has saved you. Jesus said, woman. You guys remember when Jesus talked to his mother at the wedding? He said, woman, what you want me to do? I don't know what I'm going to do here. Why are you involving me in this? And we think as woman as a really disrespectful term, but it's not. In those days, the word like me calling my mom woman was actually super respectful. And so Jesus does the same thing for this woman. He doesn't call her by sinful woman. And let me tell you, sin does not define who you are. Jesus does. You understand that? See, when I was going through this whole motion of like the chancla trying to beat me down through PUC, I was like, you know what? I'm unworthy. I'm lost. I'm a sinful person. And I kept making this list. But then when I met Jesus for the first time for real, like when I hugged him and embraced him, he called me his son. He called me a pastor. He called me a king. Okay. Right? That's what Jesus does. He defines you, not sin. Because if sin defines you, so, so if, if we look at everybody through a sinful, like, lens, of course we're going to be able to see, like, yeah, that person's a sinner. Of course, because we're sinners too. 
But when you took, when you bring the lens of Jesus, when you look through his eyes and his perspective, you see that that person is a daughter. That person is a son. So I'm asking you today, if there's anybody who's been this woman, I want you to come to the front. If you've been on the verge of like, I have a really, really bad reputation, and I'm like, everybody knows my stuff. Yes, everybody knows, but let me tell you, that, the, that has not defined you. Jesus has. I invite you, because I'm going to pray for you for sure. Because today you have a new identity. You better learn this. You better know this, right? So if you're that person, I want you to come to the front. I want to pray for you. For real. God is calling, like, for real. Like, if you want to have, like, this new transformation, okay? Starts today. Give it to Jesus because you love him. Not like, Jesus, are you going to forgive me? No, he's forgiven you. It's at the cross. So come to the front. I want to pray for you. It's my boy. It's my boy. Listen. If you've been Simon the leper, if you've been Simon the leper, who has been, who has seen people like, Hey, sinner, come on, yeah, you better get away from here, right? If you've been Simon the leper, and now you're seeing that, you know what? That person is struggling. I've struggled through that. I was once a sinner, but you know what? I'm good now. Like, yeah, Jesus has given me a new identity. I want you to come to the front. If you've ever been a Simon, come to the front. Amen, 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 amen. Now, if you've never met Jesus, because Jesus was at sitting down, I want you to come to the front as well. I'm going to pray for you. Because if you've never met Jesus, if you've, look, this is, this, is, this is a young generation. Can we just clap it up? Because they're here, okay? They're here. This is a generation in which we're struggling. But you know what? And that when we put our faith, hope, and love in Jesus, this is what happens a generation rises up. Is there anybody else? Is there anyone else? It's okay, maybe you don't have to come up here, but just say it in your heart. I love Jesus. That's it. If I can just get my cousin up here. Come up here, man. Come up here. I'm, I'm about to cry, for sure. Um... I'm not going to disclose the stuff that my cousin has gone through. But this is the first time in years that my cousin has stepped into a church. Can I just share something? Last night, I, I don't even, like this is crazy. Last night, as I preached over there, and I got out and I stepped into the car. I did a quick prayer. I don't, <laughs> I'm telling you, there was a vision that went in through my mind. And I saw this. I saw this through my vision. I promise you guys. I have no, I like, it just run through my mind. What I saw in the quick vision was that I invited my cousin here. And he was here this morning standing up with me. I saw that happening. I don't know what. I, that, that's God for sure. And now he, he's, he's here. This is my boy. He's about to turn his life around. And let me tell you, that's the transformative power when you meet Jesus. My cousin is here this morning. Brother, dude, I love you, man. 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 And let me tell you, I'm telling y'all, this is all new. This is just happening right now. But this is the type of stuff. That when a quote-unquote sinner meets, meets Jesus, he transforms him. He gives him a new identity. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, we come to you this morning proclaiming the goodness of your name. Father God, I, 
I just want to thank you so much, Lord, because your son and your daughters are here, present, ready to give their lives to you, Father God. We know that we can have a really bad reputation. We can have really bad stuff happening in our lives. But God, the devil does not have dominion over our lives. You do. Amen. And so, Father God, I pray in this moment, Lord, that you come to everybody's need. That, Father, if at times they had been the woman who had been struggling but comes at the feet of Jesus, or at the times where they've been Simon the Pharisee criticizing other people, Father God, I pray that we learn something from you, that we are forgiven no matter what our, 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 our mindsets may be on. God, I thank you so much. Father God, walk with us. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, man. Praise God. Praise God. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Uh, thank you so much. It's been a, a pleasure being here.